Let's worship together. Come on, put your hands together. Come on, One Leg family, let's give the Lord a round of applause. We are off to a great start this morning. Hey, if you're new with us, my name's Brandon. I'm one of the pastors here. Welcome to the family. I've gotten to meet so many guests today, and I'm so glad that you chose to be a part of Woodlake for this morning. At this time in our service, we're going to continue in worship, and I'm going to invite our prayer partners to come forward. The Bible clearly tells us if we have need of anything, all we have to do is ask, and the Bible tells us 100% of the time that God's listening and He cares. And so no matter what you're going through today, I want to encourage you that we are here for you. And more importantly than that, God hears you and God sees you. And so I'm going to pray over you this morning. When I say amen, if you have a need of any kind, move forward. Let our team pray with you during worship. 
God, I thank you for a great day already. Lord, I thank you for the people that said yes to you this morning, the baptisms that we're celebrating, and God, everything else that's going on. For these next few moments, help our focus be entirely on you. God, for anyone that came in struggling with something today, help them to see that you can handle it. God, for those that have had a difficult week and those that are stressed out about what's to come, help them to see that you are in control. And even more importantly than that, you love us. So God, we give this service to you. We dedicate this time to you. We focus on you. And God, we ask you to have your way in Jesus' name. Amen. Hey, move now and let someone pray with you while we worship. The grave has no claim on me. Come on, sing this out. Then came the morning that sealed the promise. Your very body began to break.
As we end worship today, I want you to help me pray for some really special people that are in the room. Uh, first, I want to invite Pastor Dennis to bring some people from our local schools up to the stage. This is Celesta, who's the assistant principal at Jefferson, Faith, who's an instructional coach at Jefferson, and Jennifer, who's a school counselor at Cedar Ridge. Both of those are elementary schools in our area. Will you guys give it up for him this morning? So I asked Pastor Dennis to bring him up because these are a couple of the schools that we partner with. And I want us to end worship today praying for everyone and going back to school. And so I want you to help me out across the room. If you are a student yourself, or you're a teacher, or you work in the school system, private, public, whatever, uh, would you just raise your hand, just hold it up for a second? Okay, if you see a hand up near you, just stretch your hand toward those people. We wanna pray for everyone involved in school this season, and stretch your hands this way as well, and we'll pray for them on the stage this morning. Let's pray. God, we thank you that you care more about our kids and our communities even than we do. And so, Lord, I pray as everyone goes back to school in the next few days, God, that you would empower them to live for you. God, our students that are going back to school, help them find right relationships that will cause them to become more like Jesus. For our teachers, for our administrators, for those that work in the schools, for our coaches. God, the Bible says if any of us lack wisdom, all we have to do is ask. And so, God, we're asking that you give them divine wisdom as they lead and care for these kids all year long. And God, I pray for every parent as they partner with the school and with the church to raise their kids. God, I pray that they would be intentional and they would give themselves a break when when things happen, but that they would remember that, God, you're in control, and you have a plan for them and for their families and for their kids. Now, God, I pray for everyone in our community to know whether they've stepped in this building or not, that there is a church here praying for them and that we love them. God, I pray for an amazing school year. In Jesus' name, everyone said amen. Hey, you guys can grab a seat this morning. Give it up for all of our school people today. Okay, so I didn't let them leave the stage yet because we got one more thing we want to do with them this morning. Here at Woodlake, if you're new with us, we have something called Bridge Builders. That's the way that we connect with our community and internationally to meet needs. And we heard about a couple of big needs earlier this year. If you've seen in the news, school lunch debt is a thing. And there are many students that acquire debt throughout the school year with their school lunches. Well, we found out about this need at these two schools specifically. And so today, we wanted to announce something that we've been able to do. I'm going to invite them to come out this morning. We have been able to give checks to both of these schools to cover the school lunch debt from last year. So can you guys give it up for these schools and everything that they're doing? And so if you wonder, hey, why do we do this stuff? This is just one of the many small ways that we are able to impact our community. And every time we give and do something like this, it's showing people the love of Jesus. So can you guys give it up for them one more time as they take their seats? You guys can go ahead and be seated. Thank you for being here. Man, they are our heroes. Everybody give it up for them one more time as they're on the way down there. We love, we love, we love our schools. That's right. 
Well, hey, we want to continue worshiping through giving. And you just heard about the mechanism that we give to above our tithe. Every gift that comes in above the tithe goes to bridge builders, building bridges in our cities, in our communities, and around the world. When you sow seed into what Bridge Builders is doing, you are spreading the gospel both here in our city by taking care of lunch debts, by expanding our Turley campus up in Turley, Oklahoma, but you're also building water wells on the other side of the planet, sending kids to schools they could never be able to go to. When you give, you're enabling missionaries and missions organizations, schools to do what they do, and we're being the feet and hands of Jesus in our community. So thank you for everything that you sow into the kingdom today. If you'd like to give this morning, you can text Woodlake and any dollar amount to 73256. You can drop cash or a check in the offering or give online. And again, if you want to designate that to Bridge Builders above your tithe, we really appreciate it. Thank you for what you're doing to impact communities. Well, if you've got an offering on you, let's hold it and let's just pray over it this morning. Lord, we thank you so much that Woodlake has been blessed so that we can bless others and we can make an impact. God, I pray that every dollar given today would go further in your hand than it could ever go in ours. God, use these gifts to expand your kingdom through the local church all over the world and right in our communities through schools like the ones we just prayed for. Now, God, I thank you for what you're doing. Again, we're just so honored to be a part of it. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, hey, thanks for giving. You can drop that in as you leave later today. Hey, my name is Brady. I'm our student pastor here, and two of our goals for you, every time you come in, you saw at both ends of our building, experiencing God and finding family. We want to give you opportunities to be in God's presence, but we also want you to get connected to God's people. And the best way to do that is what we call the Woodlake Way, going to a one-time class where you can hear all about who we are as a church, all the opportunities we have for you and your family to get plugged in and connected each and every week. And there's plenty of opportunities you're going to hear about today. If you want to sign up for that, it's on the second Sunday in second service. So we make it really easy. So it's happening right now outside these doors. There's a group of people who are learning about our church and getting connected. If you'd like to sign up, Go to theway.woodlake.church, and you can sign up there. Okay, now we've told you it's back to school Sunday, and there's a lot of celebration happening today, and we're not done yet. The last month at this church was just incredible. It's we put together a video to show you all the amazing things that you were a part of last month. Check it out. Today is not only back to school Sunday, but it's also the second Sunday of the month. And we take this Sunday and we look back at everything that happened in the prior month. So Woodlake family, buckle up, it's fixing to get real. Woodlake Church has always no Their calling is straight from the throne room of Jesus Christ. What am I doing? <laughs> Lord help me. Okay. As the Woodlake family, we are all about building bridges to our community and to people that don't know Jesus yet. First off, our Glenpool location held Food Truck Fridays. They invited the community to come in and they were able to build relationship. Also, our Turley location was able to reach out uh, to a family in need. They had a completely empty apartment. And with partnering with our Bixby location, we were able to bless this family with brand new uh, furniture and things to go along with the house. Great job building bridges inside our community. We also were able to build bridges globally and we sent a team to Ireland. They held kids camps and they were able to do great and amazing things, building bridges to the local church right there in Ireland. Great job, Woodlake family, investing and building bridges to those people that don't know Jesus yet. We were also able to build bridges in our community by inviting every foster family to come and get back to school supplies. We partnered with Sarah Stitt and her foundation, and we had a ton of volunteers. We had 236 kids that we were able to bless with brand new supplies for school. We also had a lot of fun things. We had food, we had inflatables, there were fire trucks here, and all kinds of great stuff to invest in our community and show the love of Jesus. Woodlake family, you guys have been so generous in investing in bridge builders. And whenever you give to bridge builders, 100% of that money goes to support missionaries and missions work all over the globe. And in the month of July, we were able to bless Jim King's Ministries with $15,000 to go towards Fire Bibles for the Ukrainian translation. Wow, I can't wait to see what God does with this brand new Fire Bible. 
We love our Turley location and Pastor JJ and Jennifer are doing a phenomenal job investing in the community there. And I want to give you a quick construction update. Over the past few weeks, they've been doing underground work, preparing the soil, getting electricity ran, getting plumbing, doing all the things below the slab so that it can be poured in the next week or two. So thank you guys so much for giving. Thank you for praying. And we cannot wait to see what God does through this new building. The next generation has always been a core value of Woodlake Church. And in July, we took 60 first through fifth graders to kids camp. There were so many saved. There were 10 salvations. There were kids that were filled with the Holy Spirit. There were kids that were called into full-time ministry and missions work. And we can't wait to see what God has in store for those kids. We just celebrated everything that happened at kids camp for our first through fifth graders. But we also wanted to celebrate Creative Academy. And that is where our worship and tech teams are investing in the next generation so that they can learn the traits to help lead worship, to help with running sound and cameras and all these things. There were 40 students, 20 adult leaders who invested in these kids and helped teach them the basics of helping and starting to lead. And hey guys, Creative Academy, we believe in you. You are amazing. God is going to start using you already to do amazing things. Woodlake family, let's celebrate from all three locations, 15 people that got water baptized in the month of July. They took their first steps in obedience after saying yes to Jesus, and we are so proud of these 15 people. But the whole reason we turn the lights on here at Woodlake is to see people say yes to Jesus for the very first time. And in the month of July, we had 11 people say yes to Jesus for the first time. So let's stand on our feet, let's clap, and let's celebrate with these 11 people. Hey, Woodlake family. Hey, great job celebrating and clapping, but I'm still here. We have one more special announcement for you today. Our Creative Academy did a great job investing in the next generation at Creative Academy. One of the cool special things that they did was the upper class students were able to write a worship song. And today, they're going to not just perform this for you, they're going to lead you in worship. So Woodlake family, let's worship together as these students direct us and lead us in worship. Hey, good morning, guys. Um, it just says in Psalm 95 that Jesus calls us to worship him as his, our rock. So he's our rock. He's our foundation. He's someone that we can always look to. He's solid. And so that's kind of what our song's about. Um, we wrote from Psalm 27 and a bunch of other songs.
Hey, church family, we don't just talk about the next generation. We believe in them, and we want to empower them. I mean, what's the point in waiting until they are grown? God can use eighth graders all the way through college freshmen right now to write worship songs, to be used in the kingdom, to lead classes, to do all kinds of things. I mean, our Creative Academy did just that. Gave students an opportunity to put their God-given skills to the test. Kaylee, come here. And this is Kaylee. Kaylee's going to be leaving this week. This is our last Sunday here. But Kaylee's been a part of our church for, I think, the whole time you've been a student. Forever. Forever. But, man, she's not the only student who's getting ready to go off and be a college freshman. We have students who come in for the summer from colleges all around the country. And then we also have students right now who are getting ready to leave. And I know we already prayed for some of our high schoolers, our administrators. Man, I want to pray for all those who are coming and going. I mean, we have a lot of college age that are moving to and from. Man, we want to pray that God uses them. We don't just want to give you opportunities to, to use your skills. We want to help you hone those skills and then send you out to the next place. Send you out wherever God may be taking you. So I want to just take one moment, if we can, and pray for all of our students, all of our college students coming in, and for students like Kaylee who are getting ready to go out and do great things. Jesus, we lift up all of our students to you, but God, we know that there's a special group who's stepping into the next phase of life. God, I pray that you are going to use them in a mighty way. You're going to use students like Kaylee who are going out, moving to other places here in our state and other places around the country. God, we know that you have plans and purposes for them, that you are going to use them in a mighty way. I pray that you will fill them with the power of your Holy Spirit with boldness and wisdom to know exactly what to do, who to talk to, surround them with the friends that they are supposed to have, giving them opportunities to spread love and hope in every place, in every classroom, in every job that they have. We pray that you will use them in a mighty way. God, we know that you're just getting started with what's going on in their life, just getting started with all the things that you have planned. We pray that all of our students are going to be able to walk in your plans. God, watch over them, protect them, keep them safe. Let your word be the foundation of their life. God, guiding them to the truth, the unchanging truth, no matter what schools may say, friends may say, God, let them be founded on you because we know that you will help them overcome and last through every single thing that they're getting ready to walk into. Use them in a mighty way. In Jesus' name we pray. And everyone said amen. Everybody give a round of applause to all of these students. I'm super proud of all of them. We have an incredible group. Before you get seated, we have a ton of guests today. We have a lot of people. Maybe you're here because we're getting ready to do baptisms. Maybe you came to see our students sharing their song with you. I want to give you an opportunity to meet those around you. Take two minutes right now. High five, handshake, elbow somebody around you. Make a friend, but take a moment right now. Welcome those that are around you. Hey, good morning, Woodlake family. Let me try that one more time. Good morning, Woodlake family. So glad that you're with us today. Hey, if I haven't had the chance to, to meet you, my name's Jamie, and my wife, Jen, and she's not, she's, she was in sec, our first service this morning, but I, I saw her holding a baby between services, so you guys might just check when you pick your kids up that you got them all, so no, she loves kids, she's down there hanging out this morning. And uh, if we hadn't had a chance to meet you, she and I are going to be on the front doors, the northeast doors right after the service. Uh, man, love a chance just to shake your hand and welcome you here uh, to Woodlake. So Woodlakers, give all of our guests a huge round of applause. Thank you so much. Our, our summer interns, this is their last Sunday. We've had some incredible, incredible interns this summer. And uh, I tell you, would you give all of them a huge round of applause? You're going to see some of them afterwards. Next week, we begin our fall series. Any crazy falls here? We begin our fall series, and it's, it's, this is gonna, it's gonna be real hard to wrap your head around it. It's called Romans. Yeah, I know, it's really difficult. I'm just kidding. Uh, we are gonna be diving in to probably the Apostle Paul's greatest, greatest work that he, that he ever produced, and that's the book of Romans. Listen, 
you need to be here this fall. We are going to slice off, I mean, chunks of prime rib when it comes to the word of God. You can tell it's close to lunchtime, right? Keith, I just made eye contact with you. You were there, okay. Uh, you don't want to miss. We are going to feast on the word of God. The book of Romans has so much to say to us, and it's going to be amazing. So just plan on being here, okay? But this week, um, we're going to, we have a series that uh, we're going to celebrate all things Woodlake. If you're new with us, or maybe you've been coming for a little while, and you're like, yeah, I've kind of had one foot in, one foot out. My prayer is that by the end of the day, you go, man, Woodlake's my church. And if you're a guest with us here today, we are just uh, so glad that you're with us, okay? And a great opportunity to get a taste test for what we're all about. The year was 1969, and there was a television show that made its debut And the truth is, most of us either grew up on this show or you've seen it. I'll say it to you like this. There was a famous character, an eight-foot yellow bird (laughs) by the name of Big Bird. Yes, I'm talking about none other than Sesame Street. Okay, all right. Now listen, in 1969... The one and only Big Bird made his TV debut by singing a well-known song that sounds something like this. A, B, C, D, E, F, G. T, U, V, W, X. Y and Z. Okay, all right. Let's just have a moment of honesty. How many of you are a grown adult and you can't say your ABCs without singing the song? Come on, all right? I'm with you. I'm with you. You know what's interesting? It's the same tune to Twinkle, Twinkle. <laughs> Mind blown, all right? So the whole purpose, Sesame Street and Big Bird, singing the ABCs, the the idea was this, that they were going to create a a community, a synergy around learning. And this morning, especially if you're new with us, maybe you've been coming for a little while, we're going to talk about the ABCs of Woodlake. Is that okay? So again, the goal this morning is is I I want us to know something. God has blessed this church. We are growing. Yes, we know we have parking issues. Yes, we're talking about additional services, but those are all good problems. But the last thing that we want here at Woodlake is just a religious migratory crowd. We are building the family of God, the church family. And if you read scripture, you know that God ordained the church. The church is the bride of Christ. And God uses the church for us to, uh, number one, uh, uh, be cared for, to be discipled, and to grow as a believer. Someone once said this. They said, well, pastor, I I don't have to go to church to to be a Christian. You are absolutely right. But you cannot be a growing Christian and not go to church. Okay? So so this morning, (laughs) some of you are like, okay, it's been summertime. We've been gone. Don't feel bad. That's not the goal, okay? I just want to tell you the ABCs of Woodlake and all uh, some of the many things that, um, that, that we offer here, okay? So if you're taking notes today, A, B, C, D, A. A this morning is real simple. Why, why do we turn the lights on? Is so that people can accept Jesus as Lord and Savior, okay? What do I commit to you? This fall, I want you to invite your family, your friends. You've been working on that neighbor, that coworker. I promise you here at Woodlake, it doesn't matter what service they come to, they will always have the opportunity to hear about the cross of Jesus Christ. Can I have an amen? The gospel, the good news, the the message of of God redeeming mankind. They're always going to have the opportunity to hear it. And those of you that have come for any length of time, you know that's exactly right. It didn't matter if it's Mission Sunday. It doesn't matter if we're dealing with a topic. It doesn't. It always ends at salvation, doesn't it? Because that's what it's all about. You hear me say this often. That's why we turn the lights on. Okay? You you say, Jamie, are you sure accepting Jesus and and give? We don't have to give an altar call every week. We don't have to give people a chance to get saved every week. Folks, 
Every week we will give somebody, I will never apologize for giving somebody the opportunity to get saved, right? Uh, someone said, well, Jamie, they just raised their hand and they, you know, you know do, you, do we really have, one of these days it's going to take. Hello? Uh, I know I sound like an Oklahoman, but bear with me. How many of you remember the day that it took with you? When you had the realization that you were a sinner and you couldn't save yourself, you needed someone to pay the price, and all of a sudden this Jesus thing made sense, that God loved me so much he gave his only son, Jesus, to go to the cross and pay for my sins. Somebody give the Lord a big round of applause. <laughs> Except Jesus. Jesus said this of himself, that he is the way, he is the truth, he is the life. And no one comes to the Father except through me. You say, Jamie, there's no way I'm going to get to heaven unless I go through Jesus. That's exactly what the Bible says. Well, Jamie, I'm good enough. I'm smart enough. I, I, I have enough good little check box marks, as, <laughs> marks by my name. Um, uh, there was a Barna study done recently that said this, that 53% contend that if a person is good enough or does enough good things for other people, they will earn their way into heaven. That's ridiculous. But here's what's more concerning. That statistic goes on to say that 34%, one-third of all born-again Christians accept this notion. That means that this morning in this room, maybe watching a line, there's a, there's a large number of us in here that somehow, some way, are still trying to earn our salvation. We still got this idea that if I'm just good enough, if I come to church enough, if I do enough good things, then somehow, some way, if I die or the trumpet call of God uh, happens in the rapture of the church and we're taken up into heaven, when I'm standing before the throne, they're going to be look, going through the list and go, oh, well, you know, you know barely do you realize nobody barely makes it into heaven yes. folks i'm about to tell you something that some of us some of us need to like 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 as david declared in the psalms lord return to me the joy of my salvation oh i'm so thankful that being good enough is not a thing it's all about jesus can i have an amen jesus is enough but jamie you don't know what i did friday night Jesus is enough. Jamie, you don't know how I was raised. Jesus is enough. Jamie, you don't know what I did to my wife, what I did to my husband, what I did at work, what I said, where I've been, what I clicked on. Folks, Jesus is enough. Amen? Amen? Bible says this in the book of Acts and also in the book of Romans that whoever calls upon the name of the Lord will be saved. If you're with us this morning and you are out of relationship with God, if you're here today and you know that things between you and the Lord are not the way they need to be, I promise you at the end of the service today, you're going to have an opportunity to say yes to Jesus. Accept Christ. A, B. Here's B. Be baptized. Be baptized. Why? Because baptism is biblical. It's the New Testament pattern. Um, the word baptized in the Bible, in the New Testament, is used 81 times. And this word means to dip under or to immerse, to drown, to bathe, to wash. And I love this, this, uh, of this word. It also means to sink. To sink. When we are baptized in water, Scripture says when we go down into the water, we are identifying with Jesus. We are identifying him with his death, but also when we come up out of the water, we are identifying with his resurrection. Amen? Amen. Baptism is that public declaration of, of, hey, I am now a Christian. I'm a believer. Baptism is important. Well, you say, Jamie, I, do, do I really need to be baptized it is important, folks. Maybe you're here today and you'd say, I've been in church for a long time. I've never been baptized. I've been praying today that the Holy Spirit, through his word, is going to bring some conviction here today, saying, I need to take that step of obedience. Well, Jamie, can you just come to my house and baptize me? I will, but I hold you under twice as long. I'm just kidding. <laughs> just kidding. I love our youth pastor, Pastor Brady, and there's sometimes I tell stories and think, oh, I'm, he's such a much better youth pastor than I am. Um, I used to uh, baptize kids, and um, when they would go under, especially when they come back from youth camp, and then they would try to sit back up, and I'd hold them. 
and the bubbles are coming up and there's panic. And then I pull them up. I said, I'm just making sure, right? Okay. <laughs> that, we will not do that to you. I promise my wife will not let me do that. Okay, no. <laughs> But you see, this is a pattern in the New Testament church. Mark chapter 1 and verse 5, people were going out and and, and they um, uh, they were confessing their sins to John the Baptist. And scripture says this, that the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem went out to meet him, confessing their sins. They were baptized by him in the Jordan River. You see this in the book of Acts chapter 2, 3,000 people were saved on the day of Pentecost and 3,000 were baptized. Folks, that would be fun, wouldn't it? Philip baptized the court official of the queen of Ethiopia, the Ethiopian eunuch. How many of you have heard this story? So he, he had been to Jerusalem. He was, he was reading a scroll of Isaiah, the part of Isaiah that talks about Jesus. And, and Philip heard the eunuch reading the scroll, and, and he was walking near him. And, 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 and Philip asked him, do you understand what you're reading? And the, the Ethiopian eunuch said this. He goes, how do I know unless somebody tells me? Woodlake family, how will I know unless we tell them? Amen? How will I know? How will I know? And he gets, in the, he gets up in the chariot with him. He, he, he ministers to him. He connects the dots. He's talking about Jesus and goes on and on and on. And the, the, the eunuch said this in Acts chapter 8, verses 35, 36, 37, 38. He said, that, look, here's some water. What can stand in my way to be baptized? Something happened in that court official uh, of the queen of Ethiopia. said, listen, I've got to obey the Lord in baptism. I need to identify with this Jesus. He is the way. He is the truth. He is the life. And, and Philip says, well, if you believe in the Lord Jesus, that he is the son of God. And the Ethiopian eunuch said, I do believe. And he said, let's do this. Do you realize when you say yes to Jesus Christ, the next step is baptism? We baptize every second Sunday here. So if you're sitting out there saying, that's me. If you're watching online saying, that's me, uh, I, I need to be baptized. You can sign up today. We'll baptize you uh, every second Sunday. We do that around here. Baptism is never private. It's public. It's public. It, it's, it's important. It, the size of the, the, the amount of witnesses doesn't matter, but, but, but it is public. Uh, let me say it this way. When you got married, if you were married in this place, you had to have a witness to get married. Did you know that? Um, my wife and I have been married 22 years. And if you look at this picture, you're going to notice something here. I haven't changed a bit. <laughs> Your laughter is painful. <laughs> but we stood in front. <laughs> well, come on. <laughs> um, we stood in front of a crowd of witnesses. There are hundreds of people that cannot say uh, that Jamie and Jen are married. They were witnesses, right? And it's important because when we stood up in front of family and friends and our church family, we had people that are supporting us, praying for us, coaching us, helping us along. That's the same way in the body of Christ. We, st- we are baptized in front of the body. We have witnesses. Come on, somebody. Some of you were baptized like me, maybe as a child. I, I was baptized when I was seven years old because everybody else was doing it. Anybody ever baptized like that? And, um, and I'll, I'll be honest with you, I really didn't come to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ until later on. I was in high school. I remember being in college. Some of you have heard this story. I was, I was traveling with a Bible college, and I was with a group of friends. We were traveling, representing the school, and we were at a, we were at a Motel 6. And it was a high-end Motel 6. Some of you heard this story, okay? It had a pool and a hot tub. Not the kind of hot tub you probably want to get in, but... And so some friends and I was late at night, and there was about 10 of us from, from our Bible college, and, and we were sitting around just talking about what God's done in our life, kind of sharing our testimonies. And I, I remember going, you know, I was baptized as a kid, but it really didn't... I really didn't get it. Boy, I get it now. I remember the Holy Spirit, Pastor Eric, moving in, <laughs> into the hot tub with us. Yeah, that, that, that sounds weird, but, but I remember the Holy Spirit moving, and I, I remember we looked at each other and said, we need to be baptized, about 10 of us. I'll never forget in a Motel 6 in Shakota, Oklahoma, Tom Bodette left a light on for me. Come on. Everybody above 40 laughed at that joke. All right. I remember coming up out of that water, the level of chlorine, I can still smell it to this day. But I remember 10 of my friends 
rejoicing and praising the Lord as a big deal, as a big deal. Woodlake family, this morning, we have, we're, we're baptizing. On the morning, 18 people are making public declarations of their faith to their church family. So Pastor Brandon, would you come? As they're getting ready, this is what I want to do. I, I wanted to do this A, B, be baptized. I didn't take the deal off here. Be baptized. Uh, when they come up out of the water, I want to remind you of something. These are individuals that have accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, and they are identifying not just with Christ, but with you as a body of believers. Amen? So when they come up out of the water, every one of them, you're going to see their pictures on the screen. I want us to celebrate them and celebrate what Jesus is doing in their lives. Can we do that? Give them a round of applause as they come. All right. Hey, while they finish lining up, I want everybody to look back and celebrate our youth classes that are watching their friends get baptized right now. You didn't see them sneak in behind you, some of you, but they're here. All right. So here's the way we do this. I read the name, they get in the tank, they go in the water, we all yell real loud. So I want you to practice. I'm going to point at you, and then you try your yelling part. Ready? All right. All right, here we go. So we got a couple of brothers this morning. Up first, we got Foster Branson. Everybody give it up for him. Up next is his brother, James. There we keep giving it up for this family. Next, we got Finley Dow. Everybody give it up for Finley as he makes his way in this morning. got one of our Woodlake kids, Josiah Haynes. Everybody give it up for the Haynes family today. Up next, we have a couple, both of them getting baptized. Up first is Brittany Eisen, and then Caleb's going to be right behind her. Everybody give it up for Brittany and Caleb. They're swapping out. It's Caleb's turn to get in there. All right, we got another family getting baptized. We got three sisters. Up next is Emma Vonnegut. Everybody give it up for Emma. Her sister Chloe is making her way up next. 
Everybody give it up for Chloe. Their sister Maddie is up next. All right, give it up for Maddie. All right, y'all, we got just one left. Everybody give it up for Nathan Williams as he makes his way in this morning. family. Give them one more round of applause. It's a big deal. Man, what an exciting time. Hey, when you see them in the hallway, you're like, you're one of us, all right? It's a big deal. It's good for the church. And again, I want to encourage you. You can go to our website, baptism.woodlake.church, and you can sign up and be a part of the next go-around. It's, it's that important, okay? A, accept Jesus Christ. B, be baptized. C, community. Community. Look, the body of Christ, some, I'll be honest with you, in today's culture, we've devalued the importance of the family of God. I think it's important to remember that, in fact, the writer of Hebrews in Hebrews chapter 10, and I love this passage of Scripture, persecution had hit the church. It was getting hard to be a follower of Christ. That's the context in which Hebrews chapter 10 was written. There were people that as a result of persecution and difficulty, they were saying, yeah, it's just not worth it. And the writer of Hebrews says, and let us consider how we may spur one another on towards love and good deeds, not giving up meeting together as some are already in the habit of doing, but encouraging one another and all the more as you see the day approaching. The writer of Hebrews is saying there were people already getting into the habit of devaluing the body of Christ in their life. He says, let's don't do that. He's fat, in, in fact, he says, as we see the day of Christ approaching, uh, do it more, don't do it less. And he says, may we, may we consider how we can spur one another on towards love and good deeds. That's motivation, but one of a little translation of the word spurring on is, is provoking or irritating. Uh, I think the moment we get provoked in church or we get irritated, people are already on the march to go to find a new church. Or they want to write a blog of how they were hurt in the church. And the reality is you weren't hurt. You were just provoked and irritated. Oh, pastor's getting real. I'm not denying church hurt. What I, what I am saying is I think we're really good at making excuses and not very good at making progress sometimes as the body of Christ. There should be moments in church where we are provoked and irritated. There's going to be some Sunday mornings we come in here. The worship team's going to play all of our favorite songs. Uh, the, the message is going to be like a home run right where we were living. And there's going to be other days where we come in and it feels like in the spirit we ran into a buzzsaw. How many of you know what I'm talking about? We're going to be provoked. We're going to be irritated. There are going to be some times that you and I open the word of God and the word of God is contradicting how I'm living, how I'm thinking, how I'm feeling, and how I'm speaking, and it's going to bother me. There should be some Sundays you and I leave bothered. And sometimes it's not the message. Sometimes we run into another believer who's having a bad week, a bad weekend, and they hurt our feelings. And, and all these, and, uh, instead of making excuses, how about instead of leaning out, let's lean in when it comes to the body of Christ. That's what the word says. Can I have an amen? Okay. Paul says this in Galatians 
chapter 6, verse 2, talking about the body of Christ, carry each other's burdens, and in the same way, you will fulfill the law of Christ. God has ordained the church to help do some lifting in our life. In fact, everything about the church is, is this idea that we become others focused. This is real simple. You need the church, and the church needs you. You need the church. And the church needs you. The writer of Ecclesiastes talks about it. Many of you are familiar with this passage of Scripture. Two are better than one because they have a good return for their labor. If there any falls down, one can help the other one up. But pity one who falls down and has no one to help them up. Also, if two lie down together, they will keep warm. But how can one keep warm alone? Though, may, uh, though one may be overpowered, two can defend themselves. A cord of three strands is not easily broken. And the writer there is just simply talking about the benefits of community, productivity, help, comfort, safety, and security. Listen, I need you to listen to this, okay? Separation from the bride of Christ, the church, is serious. Let me say that again. Separation from the bride of Christ is serious. Well, Jamie, I don't go to this church. I don't want to go to this church. That's fine. You find a church. You find a church. It's that important. Today in the lobby, there are going to be lots of opportunities, uh, men's, women's, kids, I, I can go down the list, opportunities for you to find community. Uh, Wednesday night around here is family night. We have a phenomenal prayer service that goes on. Not only that, we have stuff for youth, uh, students, we have stuff for kids. It's, it, we have dinner, folks. We even take that excuse away. Can I have an Amen. Oh, I got to get dinner ready. No, you don't. Just come here. We'll feed you, okay? Man, we had chicken and waffles the other night. Hallelujah. The Lord is in that. Amen? <laughs> you need to come get <laughs> waffles. I'm having waffles. Um, come be a part. We got a men's Bible study. Keith is starting this fall. Men, I'll just tell you right now. Uh, I, I see Brad over here, too. There's so many others. Steve, um, we got men's Bible studies that are going on every night of the week, almost every morning. On the weekends, men, there is no excuse. Well, I just don't connect. I promise you, you can connect. Ladies, the same way. We got women's Bible studies. We got Sunday school. Yes, this church has Sunday school. That's so old-fashioned. I don't care. There's a way to get involved in being community around here. Can I have an amen? So Woodlake family, I want to challenge you. If you've just been dipping your toes into this whole church family thing, just stop. <laughs> stop dipping. I don't know if that's the right word. Jump in to all that we provide here. Community is important, okay? D, and here's the last thing. Discipleship. It is imperative that we make intentional efforts to grow in God's word. Second Timothy chapter three, verse 16, Paul says, all scripture, say all scripture, is God breathed that means it's God inspired and is useful for teaching rebuking correcting and training in righteousness so that the servant of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work that that word equipped or thoroughly equipped in the original language it's it's a word that means um, it, it's finished that you don't need anything else to do what God's called you to do. You have God's word. In the modern culture, even in the modern church, let's keep it real, there is, a, there is an ignorance when it comes to the word of God. If the church would know what God's word says, then all the political fractions that happened the last few years would not have been a thing. If the church knew the word then we would understand what God's word says about marriage and, and abortion and all this other stuff. And, and if we knew what the word, are y'all tracking with me here today? Some of you are getting offended. Well, I'm provoking you. I'm irritating you. There would be no discussion about that. Why? Because God's word settles it. It's a finishing work. There is no other word. Well, well Jamie, I, I, I just don't have that opinion. Well, guess what God left out of the Bible? Our opinion. 
So parents, I want to challenge you. You get your kids in a small group. Get them here on Wednesday night. Get them in Sunday school class. Read the word at home. Can I have an amen? amen. Paul says it. This, this word is the, is the finishing. You, you ever worked on, a, on, a, on, on carpentry or, or woodwork or something like that, and you put, a, you put a finish on it? The finish is it's done. And that's what the word of God does in the life of a believer. It's that finishing work that makes us fully equipped. Proverbs 22 and verse 6 says, Start a children... Start children off in the way they should go, and even when they are old from it, they will not depart from it. That phrase, start your children off, uh, in the Hebrew, it, it, it means to help them develop a taste for. Help them develop a taste for. When I was a kid, I hated vegetables. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Some of you are like, I don't like it right now. And my mom loved tomatoes. I hated tomatoes, y'all. My mom, my mom would feed me tomatoes. She would sneak them into stuff. I'm like, Mom, this chili's good. You know what's in there? Tomatoes. On and on and on and on. Can I tell you, at 47 years of age, guess what I love in the summertime? Tomatoes. Mom helped develop a taste for it. Parents, grandparents, it is our job to help the next generation develop a taste for the things of God. Can I have an amen? amen. Let's do our part. One minister said it best when he said, men do not reject the Bible because it contradicts itself, but because it contradicts them. We need the word of God to contradict our flesh our ego, our sin nature. Come on, somebody. So Woodlake family, I want to challenge you. Make intentional an effort to grow. I was talking to a pastor friend of mine here in Tulsa just this week, an incredible pastor. Preaches the word, teaches the word, and he says, man, I, I, had, I had this person leave because they said they weren't, they weren't being fed. Can I just... I'm just going to let you know something. If you ever tell a pastor, well, I'm just not being fed, they may be mature and keep their face like, oh. On the inside, that's not what they're thinking. I'm going to make a real big statement. Don't say you're not being fed when you're not showing up for supper. I know nobody here would ever say that anymore. No, no, no. Uh, hear the heart of your pastor. We love you so much, and it's an honor to shepherd this church family. But I want to make sure that we know our ABCs. Now that you know them, for some of you, this is going to be brand new. You're going to have to change your schedule. You're going to have to reprioritize some things. You're going to have to look at the kids and say, let's go get our chicken and waffles, okay? We're going to feed you physically, then we're going to feed you spiritually. You're, you, someone might say, your, your husband might say, well, I don't have any friends. Well, try, right? Well, Jamie, my, my kids are introverted. There's a lot of introverted people here, right? It's okay. But lean in here to the Woodlake family this fall and let's grow and let's see God do some amazing things. Amen. I want to pray for you here today as we close. If you're with us here today and you don't have a relationship with the Lord, if you're here today and you'd say, Jamie, if you only know where I've been and what I've done, I'm so thankful. The Bible says that if we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive them all. David wrote it in Psalm 103, and this is a man who messed up horrifically, and he just simply said, Lord, you sent your word, and you forgave all my sin. And if you're here today and you say, Jamie, things between the Lord and I are not what they need to be, I want you to hear this pastor say here today, God loves you, and there's nothing you can do about it. The word says that he loved us so much he gave his one and only son, Jesus to die on a cross, to pay the penalty once and for all for all of our sins, all of our mistakes. Listen, I, I want to encourage you here today. You cannot out the blood of Jesus Christ, and some of us have tried. 
Bible says every one of us have sinned and made mistakes. The consequences of sin is death. And those of us who have made enough mistakes in your life, you know that those sins, those things that are against God's word, boy, just we know that death is the only answer. But Jesus said, I came that you may have life. Maybe you're here today, you say, Jamie, that's me. I need life in Christ. I need to say yes to him. It's, it, it's, it's time that I own my faith. It's time that I stop playing games. I need to surrender my life to him. Some of you are already trying to talk yourself out of it because you're thinking, well, I'm going to have to do this. I'm going to have to do that. Listen to me. The Bible says that he who begins a good work in us will be faithful to carry it on to completion until Jesus comes. What am I trying to say? When we come to Jesus by faith, he does the work. If you're here today and you'd say, Jamie, that's me. I, I need to say yes to the Lord. What do I do? Well, the Bible says it. Oh, I'm so thankful for the Bible now. The Bible says it this way, and whoever calls upon the name of the Lord. One version says, everyone who calls upon the name of the Lord, listen, will be saved. It is God's will for you and I to be saved. And if you're here today and you say, Jamie, that's me. I, I'm not saved. I need to say yes to the Lord. I'm going to invite everyone in here to simply bow your heads and close your eyes. Take a moment before the Lord. If you're watching online, let us know that you're saying yes to the Lord here today. But if that's you, you say, Jamie, I'm saying yes to Jesus. I'm going to leave here saved. I'm going to leave here right with God. I'm going to come to him by faith. Jesus is enough. If that's you on the count of three, would you just raise your hand? Hold it for just a moment. When you do, you can put it right back down. And then we're all going to pray. You'll have a chance to have somebody pray with you in just a moment. But we're all going to pray together. You say, Jamie, that's me. I'm saying yes to Jesus. Here we go. One, two. You be bold right now. Here we go. Three. That's me. You hold that hand up. Hold it up real high for just a moment. Thank you. I see you. I got you. Anybody else? You can put them down. Anybody else? Amen. If you're watching online, let us know. I'm going to invite you to pray with us here in just a moment. Anybody else? You're simply saying yes to the Lord here today. Amen. Woodlake family, we've had responses as we do in most of our services. I'm going to invite everyone to simply pray this prayer with me. We call it the prayer of faith, but in essence what it is, I'm just asking you to let me to be your pastor for about another 60 seconds. Let me lead you in simply saying yes to the Lord by faith today. Would everyone pray this prayer with me? Say it, dear Jesus, you are the Son of God. You died for me, for my sin, in my place. Come into my life, forgive me, and make me new. And from this day forward, with your help, I'm all yours. In your name I pray. Amen. Amen. Hey, would everybody stand to your feet and give the Lord a big round of applause this morning? Here's what we're going to do. If, if you're new with us, just before we rush out of here, our worship team will come back. They're just going to lead us real briefly through just some, some worship. It'll be real quick. But I challenge everybody in this place, before you rush out, just pause and say, Lord, what did I need to hear today? Maybe you say, I've never been baptized. I need to be baptized. Maybe for some of you, you're looking over your spouse and saying, hey, you know what? It's time to quit playing games. We need to grow. We need to get in community. We need to help our kids develop a taste. You heard something. Maybe allow the Holy Spirit to speak to you this morning. But I'm going to pray one more time. And when I say amen, our prayer partners are going to slip out of their seats and come. If you said yes to the Lord, you slip out and come with them. Let them know you said yes to Jesus Christ because there's a next step. You need to be baptized. You need to be plugged into the body of Christ. So as they come, when I say amen, you slip out with them and, and let somebody pray with you. Maybe you're here today and you need some ministry. You're sick. Uh, you, you know somebody who's sick. Aren't you thankful that God's word says we can be healed? Maybe you're here today and you're going through a troubling time and you need peace. Oh, God's word says we can have peace that transcends understanding. Maybe you need breakthrough. You need answers. Our prayer partners are here ready to pray the Bible, God's word, over any need you have. And this is a church that knows that God is going to keep his word. Can I have an amen? Let me pray one more time, and that's going to be your cue to move as the prayer partners come. Father, thank you for this morning. Thank you for your presence and your word. And Lord, I thank you in advance for healing us and bringing us peace. 
And Lord, thank you for those that said yes to you today and are experiencing that newness of life, that life more abundant that only comes through a relationship with you through Christ Jesus. In your name we pray. And everyone said amen. Let's worship the Lord for just a moment. Hey, move now with our prayer partners and let's receive what God has for us today. The blood of Jesus did the real work. He can't earn it. He, he did everything. Now we just get to be a part of the story that he's written. Man, and we want to make it easy for you. Hey, if you just said yes, you just took step A. I mean, you accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior today. We want to say we're so proud of you, but we want to help you. We want to help you with the next steps. Come down, talk to one of our prayer partners. Talk to one of our staff members out in the lobby. I mean, we want to help you with where to go next, and that is B, getting baptized. I mean, if you need to get baptized, maybe you gave your heart to Christ in the past month and you need to sign up, go to baptism.woodlake.church. You can do that, and we can celebrate what God has done in your life next month. We're going to do it the second Sunday of every month. We want to help you. But if you are stuck at steps C and D, we want to help you. I mean, in fact, everybody, you're going to have an opportunity to grab one of these cards out in the lobby. It says, get connected right outside these doors. Pastor Brandon and his team are actually out there right now. Our brotherhood teams, our sisterhood teams, and our small group teams are out there to tell you all the places that you can get connected. You need a Bible study? We have one. You want to meet with guys? You want to meet with girls? We have a place, an opportunity for you. We have something for every age, for every place in town. There is a spot for you, and we want you to get connected. Don't leave today without stopping by those booths and getting some information. This is just filled with all the people, places, and times that you can get it connected. You can be a part of discipleship. We want you to be a part of our church family. And then the last thing is this, just one announcement. For all of our students this coming Wednesday, if you're going into the sixth grade or the 12th grade, a lot of our students just came in from our Sunday school class. You saw them. That was the huge crowd that was around here. But if there's anybody in here, we want you to know we're having a back-to-school party this Wednesday for all of our students. We're going to be playing outside. We're going to have slip and slide kickball and some slip and slides for us. We're going to have ice cream for everybody and playing games. We'd love for you to be here on Wednesday night. 
But for parents, we have something for you as well. In our prayer service, we're starting a new series called Why Pray? Why should we pray? Why should we spend time in prayer? What should we pray for? And we want to give you answers to those questions as well as an opportunity to do so. So please be here Wednesday night. We'd love to have you again. We'll have dinner for you. Come and hang out with us. Find community. Find discipleship. I want to pray for you before you leave because I know God's got big things in store for you for this week. Jesus, I pray for every man, woman, and child in this building. God, that they would walk out of here in the confidence knowing that they are a child of God, that you are going before them, behind them. You have done the work. Your blood has paid the price once and for all, and now we get to walk in the story you have written for us. And God, let us all remember, we have a place in your kingdom. We have a role to fill. There is something that you want to accomplish in and through every person in this room this week. Help us, through the power of your Holy Spirit, to walk in whatever plans you may have, to be the hands and feet of Jesus everywhere we go. Give us wisdom and knowledge and boldness. Watch over us, protect us, keep us safe, and let us have an amazing rest of our week. In Jesus' name we pray, and everyone said amen. If you have any offering, you can drop it in the buckets as you leave. Don't forget, grab a Get Connected card. We'll see you here Wednesday night.